So next I'd like to invite Ms. Agnes Niehoff. She is the Chief Representative for Nufik Nesso, which is the, the Dutch um, uh, Educational Research Support Office. Uh, you heard from one of her alumni just before the lunch break, Dr. Patroti, and how her experience in Holland then led her to, to reapply for another uh, fellowship in Europe, which was, which was in Austria. So, Agnes? Yeah. You okay. Yeah. All right. Hello, my name is Agnes from the Netherlands Education Support Office. Our office is located uh, within the Netherlands Embassy in Saitonson. Before we start um, about the fellowships and the grants, I would like to uh, present, uh, well, to give you a general impression about education in the Netherlands uh, with a nice video. I'm not sure if you could... Uh For an inspiring city, Sydney, Beijing, New York maybe. But then why wouldn't you go straight to the source? The Netherlands. What? The Netherlands inhabited with, on average, the tallest people in the world. If you haven't heard much about them, it's probably because their motto seems to be, let's not pretend to be bigger than we are. The first thing you need to know is that the Netherlands is also known as Holland and is inhabited by Dutch-speaking people who also speak English. 150, please. Very good food, thank you. Confused yet? Well, the reason they speak English so well could be partly explained by the fact that they've been wandering all over the globe since the 16th century. Holland was the economic and cultural center of the world. They established a vast trading network, opened their first university in 1575, and even laid the foundations for contemporary New York City, which was called New Amsterdam back in those days. Curious? Let's take a closer look, shall we? Just who are these tall, internationally-minded entrepreneurs living at the heart of Europe? At first sight, the Dutch are uncomplicated, but in a rather complicated way. Johan Cruyff, their most famous soccer player, once said, every disadvantage has its advantage. He managed to bring soccer to a whole new philosophical level. This remarkable, say, out-of-the-box approach to analyzing and solving problems is something they put to good use in the 14 research universities and 40 universities of applied sciences around the country. The Dutch democracy is home to over 190 different nationalities, living in its many cities and villages. One has to admit that the Dutch are generally open-minded, freedom-loving and tolerant towards foreigners. All told, the Dutch take a very broad view of life, at least in their mind, because their tiny homeland measures only 300 kilometers from north to south and 170 kilometers from east to west. Still, country only covers a 0.008% of the Earth's surface, they have the 16th largest economy in the world. That must be the reason why they drink 136 litres of coffee a year, making you wonder if they ever sleep. Because two-thirds of their country lies precariously below sea level, the Dutch long ago developed a survival through consensus concept that is now commonly known as the Polder model. Within this concept, people from all walks of life are encouraged to contribute their opinion when it comes to national problem solving. This philosophy has served them well in holding back the sea. They turned into supreme masters of just about anything connected with water. Their 17,000 kilometers of dikes have approximately the same length as the Great Wall of China. But far beyond water management, the Polder model has also created a fertile environment for developing innovative technological solutions to many of the problems facing the modern world. Over the centuries, the Dutch have produced many progressive artists, writers, philosophers and scientists. 
Today, architects and designers in the Netherlands have come together under the collective name of Dutch Design, and their influence is felt all over the globe. You can also find evidence of the Dutch love for sharing opinions in their approach to teaching. In the 1,400 different English study programs around the country, they create an open, informal environment in which students and teachers share and debate new insights. For the Dutch, it's much better to debate a question without settling it than to settle a question without debating it. Dutch academics have established a reputation in a range of scientific disciplines, such as nanotechnology, renewable energy, medicine, water management and architecture. The country's higher education programs offer great diversity, high quality education and excellent research opportunities in an international environment. Dutch researchers are among the most productive in the world, which helps make Holland one of the best performing countries worldwide. So, on the downside, you'll be spending this next period of your life on a bike in a flat country below sea level. But on the upside, you'll be inspired by great culture and intellectual challenges. And you'll return home with a high-quality international bachelor's, master's or PhD degree in your pocket. So I would almost say, if it ain't Dutch, it ain't much. So I hope um, you will be awake after this uh, video. Okay, so um, I think we can start with the presentation now. Okay. Yeah, our office um, is um, well. It's called the Netherlands Education Support Office. Our headquarters are in the Netherlands. Um, the NAFIC. Last year, NAFIC uh, merged together with European Platform, and uh, currently we are actually an expertise center um, for not only higher e education, but also for primary, secondary, and vocational education. So we have everything combined. Um, we have 12 offices worldwide. Our last office was open in South Africa and also Turkey. Then we have the bigger offices which are located in Brazil, in Russia, um, in India, Indonesia, China of course. And then we have some smaller offices uh, such as in Thailand and in Vietnam and in South Korea and in Mexico. Uh, our location is in the Netherlands Embassy. What I mentioned before, it's at site in Soi Thonson. Okay, um, I will give you a brief introduction about um, the Netherlands education. Um, it's a little bit different from the UK or from or the US system. It's a, a quite similar to the German uh, system. So we have uh, research universities and universities of applied sciences. Um, we have 13 research universities which are focused on, well, academic, it's more academic focused, research oriented. And then we have also universities of applied sciences, uh, which is not, it's not in the rankings, it's also not academic focused. So uh, for, to continue for a postdoc or your um, doctoral degree, you have to go to a research university only. At the moment, the Netherlands offer quite a lot of international programs, um, over 2,200 English uh, programs. The research universities, we distinguish quite a few uh, research universities. We've got one agriculture uh, university, Wageningen University. It's very well known for agriculture and uh, environmental sciences. And then we also have three technical universities, which is TU Delft, um, I'm not sure if you've heard about it, uh, Twente University and Eindhoven uh, Technology. Um, here you can see the difference with the, uh, with the universities. Also in the duration for the bachelor program, usually at a research university, it will take three years. Then you can do your master one to two years, and then you can do your PhD, which is usually four years. And the universities of applied sciences, um, you can't do your uh, doctor's degree there. So only at a research university. So the research opportunities in the Netherlands, actually the Netherlands offer uh, researchers and scientists a very good um, a research, and it's a good environment. Um, you will be actually um, be seen as an employer of the universities as a scientist. You don't get a, a student visa, but you will actually get a work permit. Um, 
which is maybe different from other countries. Also, um, in terms of publications, the, university rank, um, the universities are ranked very high in the Netherlands. That is because uh, the publication per researcher is second worldwide and also, um, yeah, it has an excellent reputation. And of course, we offer um, state-of-the-art facilities and technologies. At the moment, in Thailand, we have some research collaborations uh, on medical, uh, medical sciences with Mahidon University, Jula Longkorn University, together with the Erasmus University and the University of Groningen. Then we also have a research collaboration with Wageningen University, and this is um, with Kaseet Saad on agriculture. And we have a research collaboration with veterinary sciences. Um, then we also have some research um, organizations, um, scientific, the NVO is the Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research. This is in terms of, of fundings. And they also have nine in institutes of its own. Um, it's, not, it's not part of um, the NAFIC, but you can, uh, I would actually refer you to visit their website. These are the research centers that they have. So it's um, from physics to um, marine science, they have actually everything, and they also have fundings. They're, so at the moment they have 170 different research fundings. They also work together with um, the private sectors and the government. At the moment we have, um, these are the nine top sectors that the, the Netherlands uh, aims for. It's agri and food, uh, chemicals, creative industry, energy, high-tech, horticulture, life sciences and health, logistics and water climate. Um, their goal is that um, private, the private sector, scientists and um, the government collaborate together on new, uh, well, on innovation, technology and on new research. So this will also give you an opportunity to collaborate um, with the private sector and this contributes to our knowledge economy. So for research opportunities in the Netherlands, for, um, I would suggest you to go to this website. I'm not sure if you will distribute it among the, yeah. And you have to, uh, for your research proposal, uh, it should be submitted through a new system that the Dutch government uh, is, uh, has created. So you can keep track on the application. <coughs> and this is the database of all their research uh, funding. So it's, um, yeah, you can, you can sort it by each, uh, uh, each department. Then we have another funding research. It's the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. Um, we, they have 18 institutions, um, um, science institutions. It's, um, the website is below, it's the knav.nl and then slash eng. And these are the disciplines. So they also offer a lot of uh, grants. Um, yeah, there are sev several grants. Uh, in psychological and social uh, sciences and behavior, um, the Academy Medical Science Funds, Ac Academy Ter Meulen Grant. Um, yeah, I think you have to look through uh, the website. That's quite a lot. And then this is from the NAFIC, from our own uh, organization. It's called the Netherlands Fellowship Program. Uh, this program, you need to have, it's for uh, only for doctoral degrees. Uh, you need to have at least three years work experience. You have to um, write a good proposal. You need to have a good English proficiency. Um, IELTS uh, 7 is recommended. And uh, you have to apply directly to the professor. So you have to find a professor and um, be accepted. And after your acceptance, you can um, apply for this fund. It's called the Netherlands Fellowship Program. So people in, um, for you who works 
work as a scientist or you can apply for it. More information can be seen on the website. And then I think this is the most interesting for you all. This is a database for all the PhD vacancies or postdocs uh, that we have in the Netherlands. Um, it's called academictransfer.com. It's a database uh, job portal. Here you can see um, an overview of the, um, when you enter the website. And you actually can select or filter through, their, um, through, the need, through your needs and specializations and disciplines. And here you can uh, find two of them. One is in the medical research of the Amsterdam Medical, Amsterdam medical Center. And uh, you can see the, the requirements, the conditions of employment, and also the duration, um, deadline, of course. And then, uh, yeah, I've got here also one from Delft University of Technology. It's a traineeship in chemical product design. So this portal, the academic transfer, will show you um, everything about um, about uh, the doctor postdoc degrees or uh, doctoral degrees. Then we have two upcoming events. Um, it will take place on the 18th of May next Wednesday. It's a um, general information session about the Netherlands. And then on the 15th of July, we have a pre-departure briefing for um, well, st students that are going to the Netherlands or researchers that are going to the Netherlands and we pre prepare them for their uh, study. So um, feel free to uh, contact us. Um, if you would like to have more information, you can contact me, of course, and you can look on the, our website. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Agnes. So once again, a number of opportunities for you, uh, in this case in, in the Netherlands. Uh, any questions for Agnes? Agnes, before you go. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Quick, oh, there we go, yes. Uh, yes, Agnes. From from what you say, it sounds as though um, water control is a particular specialty of the Netherlands. Yes. Uh, what would be the major or most important institutions that would be involved um, in that? For water control, we have the UNESCO IHE. The which? UNESCO IHE, mm -hmm. but also Delft, um, Deltaris. Okay. Um, which is specialized in um, in water. The the on academic transfer or your access, I think you've got a database as well. You can filter actually on your discipline, and then you can find all the institutions um, that are experts in uh, in this field. And our our uh, education in general, all the research universities, and um, the quality of research universities is quite similar because our government. Um, we have our own uh, um, requirements or policy to keep the standards high. So there's not much difference between the universities. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Please join me in thanking Agnes once again. So we're drawing to, to a close here. It's been, it's been a very full day. Uh, I hope it's been useful for you. We've shared a lot of information, a lot of funding and fellowship opportunities. It's a lot to digest, I know. We will post all of the, the presentations from today on the EuraAccess website. Uh, so you'll be able to, to access them there. Um, a number of the speakers today are still here. Dan is here. Uh, Kunchanya is here. Stefan is here. Agnes is here, and Georg is here, so, so please take advantage of the fact they're here. There are also a number of alumni still here, so in the session outside you can, you can ask them some, some, some questions as well. Um, I said in my presentation earlier, uh, we welcome you to, to join your access, and, and by doing that we will keep you up to date on, on, on as many of these funding opportunities as we can. 
as I said, we send out these weekly flash notes uh, where we try and collect four or five, six of the, the most immediate uh, funding opportunities that are available, you know, calls that are open now. And then please follow us also on Facebook where there's a regular updating of, 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 of uh, um, opportunities open to you. Um, I hope the event's been useful. We would be very grateful if you could please fill out this feedback form, which we've left on your table before you leave and head out to the, to the networking session. We need this because we're always looking to, to improve on what we're doing, and it's, and it's on, the basis of your feedback, on the basis of your feedback that we can do that. So please give us your honest assessment, and, and we, do, we do read these. And then obviously in the next event, we will do our best to, to improve on areas that, 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 that possibly need improvement. But uh, thank you for coming. And, and Susanna, would you like to, any farewell comments? No, I just uh, would also like to thank our speakers for traveling all the way from Europe or other parts of ASEAN to share their wisdom. The panelists, I think, were excellent. Excellent panel today. The audience, of course, was fabulous, and we all left Thailand. So thank you very much for the hospitality, and we hope very much that many of you will be able to make use of the information that you've heard here today, and, and we'll see you next time in Europe. Thank you very much. So there's coffee served outside, so take this chance to, to relax a little bit and, and uh, uh, possibly talk to to some of our presenters today. Could I ask the Franco Thai alumni and the Newton Fund alumni just to wait with us for a little bit with our, just for a couple of minutes? Okay, we'll see you outside. <laughs>